Over 2,000 years ago, there was an amazing discovery. When squares, the length of a side squared, were put on each side of a right-angled triangle, the two smaller squares fitted exactly inside the bigger square. In maths terminology, this is expressed as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is always the longest side, the hypotenuse. So, sometimes the equation is written like this, a squared plus b squared equals h squared. This is known as Pythagoras' theorem. For a right-angled triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the squares of the other two sides. Although its discovery is accredited to Pythagoras, it was already known to the Chinese, Indians and Babylonians before him. In fact, it was used in the building of the Egyptian pyramids some 2,000 years before Pythagoras was even born. Let's see how it works. Take our example of a right-angled triangle with side lengths of 3 metres and 4 metres. How long is the longest side? First, draw and label the triangle, with A and B being the shorter sides, and C being the longer side, the hypotenuse. We can substitute in the values. Now, try it for yourself. What is the length of side C for this triangle? Did you get it right? Let's take a look. We start with the theorem, then bring in the values. That's C squared, so we find the square root of this to give us the value of C. We can also rearrange the equation if we only know the hypotenuse and one other side. Can you think of an example problem to set for your classmates? This theorem is particularly useful in the building trade. Almost every construction project requires right angles. If you're building a deck, framing a wall or laying tiles, a 90 degree angle will be needed. With the 3-4-5 triangle previously seen, we can find our right angles without any complicated calculations. Pythagoras' theorem is the relationship between lengths of sides of a right angle triangle. But what if we only know the length of one of the sides? This is where we need trigonometry. This is the relationship between the lengths of sides and angles in a right angle triangle. There are handy rules called trig ratios that help us find the values we need. Let's see how they work. The longer side is the hypotenuse. The side opposite the known angle is called the opposite. The remaining side next to the known angle is the adjacent. We need to be able to label these sides correctly so we can determine the correct trig ratio to use. The ratios of the length of sides are given special names. Let's say we have a known angle, theta. Sine theta equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine theta equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Tangent theta equals the opposite divided by the adjacent. Remember, so katoa. Once you've correctly labelled the sides and decided which trig ratio you are going to use, you can now go about finding either the missing side length or the missing angle. Why not try it yourself? Label the sides of this triangle, then use this information to determine which trig ratio or triangle you need to use. Use this to find the length of the missing side. If it's an angle you want to find, you'll still need to use the trig ratio or triangles, but this time you need to use the inverse button on your calculator. With practice, this will all become second nature. So remember, if you know an angle and only one length, you need to use the trig ratios to find the values of the missing lengths. If there are no other angles given, you simply apply the Pythagoras rule. Now, Let's see if you can solve these problems.